place the board in the center of the table. Take the tactic cards deck, which looks like this. Shuffle it and place it on the tactic card spot. Place the round tracker on the first space of the year track. This game takes place over four years. Separate the soldiers into four different decks and place them along the side of the board. You should have 20 footmen, 15 arquebusers, 10 knights, and 5 war machines. Components in this game are limited, so if, say, you ran out of war machines, you wouldn't be able to pick up any more. Place the three battle victory trackers, henceforth to be known as little red bead thingies, on the center space of each of the three battles in the coming year. Place the six house victory tokens on the negative one space of the house victory point track. This track is going to act as a multiplier at the end of the game. The better a house does, the more it's going to be worth. Place the coins, victory tokens, and house influence tokens nearby. This game is best as a five player game. If you play with four, you remove two of each color from the house influence token pool. And randomly determine the first player. Starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise, each player chooses a dog of war. Each dog of war has a different special power that breaks the rules of the game. These powers probably aren't going to make a lot of sense unless you're already familiar with the game. So I encourage new players to just pick the dog of war you think has the coolest hat. And they're all pretty well balanced anyway. Besides, the first time you play a game, I think should be less about trying to win and more about just figuring out how this little universe works. Also, if you own this game, you probably know that the rulebook is like 50% fluff text. It's nuts, but this game has the coolest backstory of any game I've come across so far. Someone put a lot of work into it, so if you haven't checked it out yet, maybe do. Take this guy, for instance. He's heir to the throne and was rescued from a dungeon by a witch who then flew him back to her witch den, <laughs> only to wait for a full moon and cut out his heart, then turn him into this mechanical agent of death. But then, like the Frankenstein monster, creation abandoned creator, and now he's this undead steampunk mercenary, the nameless conqueror. So that's who we're gonna be, and I'll show you how to finish setting up. Each player collects the player screen of their dog of war, and the six busts of their character. These are your captains, and they must remain in front of your screen. Everything else can be hidden behind it. Next. Each player begins the game with five money. Two random tactic cards. These are ways of breaking the rules. And one random house support card which only this player will know. Any leftover house support cards will be returned to the box.
each year in Dogs of War is comprised of four phases, the first of which is the battle setup phase. In every year except for the first, the first thing you'll do is move this token up one space. But since we're still in the first year, we're going to leave it there. Next, take the six bonus rewards tokens and shuffle them gold side up. Then place one silver side up on the bonus reward space of each battle. Next, shuffle the eight order of battle tiles and deal six out onto the order of battle spaces. This is order of battle as in a command as opposed to initiative. You'll have two left over for now. Set them aside. Then shuffle the six house cards and place one each on the appropriate spaces. So for our first year, our first battle will be between House Harlow and House Bastiani. Our second battle will be between House Tornborn and House Talbot. And our third battle will be between House Hackett and House Mallory. Lastly, the first player can choose to continue being the first player or they can assign it to a different player. In the first year, each player gets three captains. In the second and third years, each player gets four captains, in addition to any captain they may have gained through a bonus reward the previous year. And in the fourth year, each player gets five captains, in addition to any bonus rewards. Also, every year, each player has a fixed income of three. Now that could be three silver coins, each worth one, or one gold coin, worth three. Starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise, each player will have an opportunity to spend their coins on soldiers for the coming battles. A footman costs one, but they're weak. An arquebuser costs two, and they're a little bit better. A knight costs three, and they're better still. And a war machine is the heftiest, but they're also the most expensive. Let's say I'm the first player. I have seven coins. I spend three on a knight. Then one on a footman after which I decide I need an arc boozer, so I spend another two. This leaves me with one coin, which I can then either spend on another footman, or I can save it until later. When you've finished, take the coins you've spent and place them in the bank, and the soldiers you've paid for and place them behind your screen. After which, it's the next player's turn until everyone has had a chance to muster. First, and only at the beginning of your turn, if you want, you can play a single tactic card from your hand, resolving its effect and then discarding it. Next, you must play a single soldier onto one of the soldier spaces on the board. These battles can be thought of as taking place simultaneously so you don't have to begin with the first. If you want, you can begin with the third. Then place a single one of your captains on one of the order of battle spaces adjacent to where you placed your soldier. A captain will never go into battle without a soldier, and a soldier will never go into battle without a captain. 
so plan accordingly. Adjust the battle victory tracker in the direction and strength of the unit you placed. I placed a footman, so it moved one. An arquebuser would have moved it three, a knight would have moved it five, and a war machine would have moved it seven. If ever the battle victory tracker is on the 15, it cannot go any higher. This can be thought of as the center of a tug of war rope. If it moves in this direction, this side is winning. If it moves back in this direction, this side is winning. Next, take the reward listed beneath where you placed your captain. In this case, a tactic card. There are three additional rules to placing your captains. First, you cannot place captains on both sides of a battle. Second, you cannot place a captain if there are no spaces on which to place your captain. first two spaces on each order of battle tile have prerequisites. You cannot place your captain here unless you've played a knight or higher here. You cannot place your captain here unless you've played an arquebuser or higher here. Having played a footman, I would not be able to place my captain here or here. Now it's the next player's turn. Play proceeds clockwise until each player has passed, which you might do if you run out of captains, if you run out of soldiers, or if you pass early, because the first player to pass gets to be the first player in the coming year. But once you pass, you are done for the year, and you don't get to carry your captains over. So pass with care. Two footmen, one victory point, one extra captain, one tactic card, two house influence tokens, in this case for Bastiani. Blank spaces give you nothing. Two coins, an arquebuser, a knight and a war machine. I think the only symbol we haven't seen yet is three victory points. Some spaces give you more than one type of a reward. This one, for instance, gives you a tactic card, a house influence token for Tornborn, and a coin. We've skipped ahead to year four, and this is the state of the scene at the end of the action phase. It's time to evaluate the battles, beginning with the first. If the little red bead thingy is anywhere from the one to the 14 on one side, then that side is considered the victor. In this case, House Harlow beat House Bastiani. The first thing we do is move Harlow's banner up one space on the house victory point track. Then, each player that committed at least one captain to the victor will gain victory points equal to the number of opposing captains. In this case, green and brown will both gain four victory points. Last, the player that committed the most captains to the victor will gain the bonus reward. In this case, green and brown both committed to, so both will gain the reward. Note here that we are using the gold bordered side of these tokens. This is only the case for year four. In years one through three, you'll use the silver side. Moving on. 
If the battle victory tracker is in the center, then both houses are considered defeated. No one moves up here. No one collects victory points for defeated captains. And nobody gains the bonus reward. If, however, the battle victory tracker is on the 15, it's considered a glorious victory. House Hackett will move up not one, but two spaces. And House Mallory, for having suffered a crushing defeat, will move down one space on the house victory point track. Each player that contributed at least one captain, yellow, brown, and gray, to the victor will gain victory points equal to the number of opposing captains, two. And finally, the player that committed the most captains, brown, to the victor, will gain the bonus reward. If this were years one, two, or three, we would reset everything below this line and begin again with phase one. Since we are in year four, we'll move on to end game scoring. It's the end of the fourth phase of the fourth year. The game is over. Each player removes their screen, revealing what they've kept hidden behind it. We tally victory points and determine a winner. Moving from left to right. One victory point. Plus three is four. Plus six is ten. Each unused tactic card is worth one. as is each unused soldier, regardless of their value. Every two coins rounded down are worth one victory point. This is five divided by two rounded down is two. Next, take the number of house influence tokens you have for a house and multiply it by where that house is on the track. We have one for house Mallory multiplied by zero is zero victory points. And two for house Harlow multiplied by one is two. Last, take your house support card and multiply the influence you got from it by where that house is on the track. Two times three is six, bringing us to a grand total of 22 victory points, meaning we probably lost the game <laughs> by quite a bit. I didn't engineer this very well, but anyway, that is how you play Dogs of War.